do it. Definitely not the first recording of the night. Hi, friends. It's me, Kiyosh. Here to help you learn Final Fantasy 15. Any percent. Correct. Yeah, I printed already. Um, so, yeah, this is going to be an update to the tutorial for Final Fantasy 15 Any percent. Uh, Windows Edition and also um, Royal Edition. Uh, who do I recommend? What, filament wise? Oh, very funny. Um, but yes, uh, today's date is the 24th of January of 2024. So this will be very up to date. A um, couple of things to get it started. Uh, I do run with the FPS monitor on, um, which gives you that infographic up there. Um, I am still running at 30 FPS because I just, my brain melted. Um, so we're going to bump this to 120. Um, if anyone in the chat has questions, just shout them out. We'll get to them. And we also have the input viewer in the top right of the screen. So, I'm going to go new game, normal, skip the tutorial, and away we go. Uh, this time, I won't forget to unmute the audio, I promise. Listen, the only bummer of printing with, with polycarbonate is that I have to turn the AC off because I have to keep the, uh, the printer chamber at literally 100C. So. Came out really nice, though. <laughs> but either way, um, we're just going to go right into it. Um, well, it's not a toy. Like, I've had the printer. It's just the first time really printing with polycarbonate. So it's more of a tinkering than a toy. So, um, Hang in there, buddy. there are kind of, well, I say two different strats. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the stuff is food safe. Pet G is as well, I think. Um, so there are basically two routes, which is basically how I run it and how Yida runs it. Um, so I do a route that is a little bit slower pre-chapter one skip um, is much faster at Deadeye um, and AMG setup, but uh, the, the chances of a one cycle Ifrit are very low, um, but are pretty consistent for um, like a two cycle. Uh, Yida's route, instead of getting swapped to Ignis and uh, Powercraft, uh, saves up and gets Tech Strike before the end of the run, um, which gives you a better chance at getting a one cycle Ifrit, but it's still, you know, not 100%. Um, I've just gone with, with what makes me comfortable, um, you know, to each their own. So I'm going to, I'm going to basically run my route and if exactly anything strange happens, uh, um, I can, you know, kind of go further kind of into way. detail of, um, like what the backup strats are, Let's just hope um, this and how one so would recover. Gladio, Dinner? Dinner sounds good. What? I just, we had a spare yourself. Supreme pizza All in the myself. freezer. You won't even notice if we just let go. Toronto, uh. don't even think about it. Save some breath for pushing. Ignis, come on, time to switch. Mm -hmm. no, we just switch back there. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. my turn. I forgot. This is why I wanted to mute the audio. There we go. Oh, dang. There you go. Um, but yeah, if you are thinking of learning this run, remember to hot toggle your audio because you're going to get copyright pinged every time for this song. Trying to think of like there's anything else to really point out. Um, I'll probably just brain dump the same stuff that I just brain dumped like 20 minutes ago. Um, 
so yeah, what we're gonna do is um, to to bear in mind, AMG in and of itself is is a pretty heavy glitch. Um, so unfortunately, once AMG is active, I I do not have the ability to like kind of reload and redo stuff. Unfortunately, because of the state that the game ends up being in. Um, I know a lot of people are struggling no, with CCD, so before, I will go over go on, uh, kind of the learning Just process sure for that. Get lost. Um, and hopefully provide some sort of insight. Um, because I run so many categories of the game, I like to keep my menus pretty consistent across all of them. So we're going to have Noct in the Magitech exosuit with the Key of Prosperity. We're also going to equip Ragnarok, Blaze Fire Saber, and the um, Mage Mashers. The boys are going to get all of the AP accessories. Going to go right here. It's the fastest answer. We're going to skip dialogue. Any way we could earn a little? Old man's got his eye on you now. I'm also going to get Chain Fury what you got. Uh, in the Ascension Tree. I'm going to do this just because I don't know how to do it slow. And then we can go back and look at it. You will get to a point <laughs> with this. Cool. So there's Noctis set up Engine Blade, Ragnarok, Blaze Fire, Saber, Mage Mashers. You can put them whichever direction. I don't care. This is just how I've done it for years. It's more effective for me this way. The of Prosperity is going to increase drop rate. Uh, Magitech Exosuit is going to prevent us from taking damage or getting knocked down. The boys are just going to have the fanfare accessories. This is going to give you a little bit more AP. The way I have this routed for myself, I need to have a minimum of 46 AP before starting Deadeye. Is what it is. Easier route, more flexible. Um, you just need to have a spare 48 before Ifrit. So... But don't We're just going to basically proceed dark. like the this is literally any other category of the game. We're going to go through the this tutorials, um, just but I'm going to lag a little bit and take the strategies on tutorial fights one and three, uh, mainly because they're like the smallest time loss sometimes, if any, to get the extra AP. I'm going to grab this Mega Elixir. That's pretty important. How's our setup look? Looks like setup looks pretty okay here. Um, that was not great, but, you know, we're just going to do it. It is what it is. I'm not running for world record right now. Cool. So, I'm going to get these five attacks. This is obviously incredulously slow, but whatever. You get the point. Um, let's see what kind of, like, general housekeeping notes I have. Like, if, if you mess it up and you're, like, not, like, pushing for PBs... Like, if you don't get the first one, you know, you can do the AP here at the second one. Or, heck, if you're comfortable enough, you can just go with, with, with Yuta's strats. Um, you know, just know that it's, it's, it's a different AP route, and that's okay. Um, with this fight, though, I definitely try and finish away from this rock. Uh, for some reason, if you get too, like, kind of too close to it, the, the point warp never shows up. Let's get on with it. Um, third one here it can be a little bit tricky. Um, I personally try and work from the bottom up. Um, just because of warp strike geometry in this game, um, it's better to attack something above you than below you. Uh, you are way more likely to hit stuff that is above you than below you, just how the game's physics system works. So this looks like not a bad setup. I have this dude. And there we go. Not bad. Very important. Take a photo. Right there. Normally you're gonna be you're gonna be set uh, at, at this menu. Take your photo, and then just close out. You can leave it there. Um, very 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 important. Actually, we just finished. That's great. Uh, I got one more hunt for y'all. Only just, this just time, it's for a crab and a salad. Went off. We ain't heard from him since. Reckon he staked out a spot. Sounds like some Maryland back. behavior. Uh, oh, got it. We'll take a look. So 
Three warp strikes. Um, this fight can be annoying and frustrating for people. Um, for me, what I try and do is I try and kind of push myself into the back so I can work my way up and out. Makes sense. You okay? We are now. Spoke too soon. I am not in All right, cool. Um, you will also notice, I guess, like, let me bring this all the way back for people. Um, I am jumping a lot. One, it's faster movement. Two, you can't get any of, like, the link strikes, um, you know, when you're in air. The attack pattern is faster, and it prevents you from getting any costly, uh, fancy animations. Sure, they're cool. Sure, they give you AP, but try and avoid them at all costs. Um, this is Dave. Normally, for me, if I'm like rolling, I'm looking for a time somewhere in the mid to low 750s load removed here. Um, no, that, that's just kind of like my first checkpoint. Like, hey, did this go well enough for me to keep rolling? Again, mileage may vary. I would encourage a lot of you until you, you know. Y'all don't look much. Can complete runs without catastrophic what errors. Just say? take whatever run you get. You rest for me? I'll tell Dave we're going to do it for a price. He's going to give me two sure. extra AP here. Well, for the right price. And I have a setup that I've used for years for Ifrit Skit or um, Ignis Second, Skit. I thought you were going to forget to ask for cash. I'm going to tilt up and hold up. I'm going to swap to Royal Raymond. I'm going to roll. Two jumps, two warp strikes. And this pattern is pretty consistent. Jump, gonna warp strike, touch ground, warp strike, touch ground, and then don't touch ground. Like I said, it's pretty consistent. Be wise to rest up before we set out. Again, sometimes stuff just doesn't work out. This is one of those cases, so. Just Ignis remember, is gonna make me look like a fool. So yeah, it is what it is. Again, I'm honestly not in any super hurry um, with this run until we get AMG active, or at least until we make it to, to Wix, um, because after that, we are on a clock within the game. Over there. That's it, right? Huh. That's a dual horn? I mean, yes, they, technically a lot of things in-game are on a clock. We Traffic is on an in-game clock. Um, and the more runs you do, you'll start to notice that? patterns and what? consistencies. Alright, pretty easy fight. Yeah. I'm literally just going to hold triangle at a cutscene. Uh, if you're using an Xbox controller, that would be Y, I guess. Why? It's an Xbox controller. Um, but we're basically going to point warp. Warp strike. Turn to this one and warp strike again. Okay, we're gonna get screwed out of this occasionally. Sometimes it happens. I don't know why, but it, it doesn't give you the vulnerable damage that you're supposed to get. I get, listen, I'd rather have all the weird stuff happen now in this yep. like tutorial than <laughs> never happen and have it happen to you and be like, I don't know what happened, but something's wrong. Hello? Um, hey. You know, obviously for me, at, at the the caliber of runs I'm pulling, like, both of the two things that just happened are pretty much automatic resets, because I don't have 15, 20 seconds to cough up. Especially because early game is, like, really my own time save. This question does not matter. It's just, you know, what what skin you want on your car. Sounds good. She'll be waiting at the garage. Gotcha. All right. Coming out of this, basically wait until you can kind of move and then return to rest point. No, no, not today. So, nah, we're just updating the any percent wheel. tutorial. Yeah, y'all can treat this uh, like exactly like a normal crash. stream. It's totally fine. I couldn't even keep She's Basically back. just me recording and sure commentating. Put me in the driver's seat. So, Good. we're gonna be rude to Cindy, to tell her no. Um, gives us an extra two AP. 
Yeah, I thankfully don't have to go back to the, the four-hour run probably food. for a while. Oh, and before I forget, would y'all mind making a little delivery for me? We're a little so, busy. Hard stuff. Say no to Cindy? Thought you'd say yes. Um. So I already put realistically. There should be until like the end of this segment there. and section wouldn't mind giving that to the owner you don't have to drive the car Grandpa you don't want like to um now that she's all polished but it does up, save time for the road um would you care to take her for the other thing you're probably going to want to practice with is just learning how ignis handles the car and how to do a quick stop uh which is sure. basically double tap and, and hold and I need brake to you to and mash the caution. park button um, going into this, I split this menu up to basically in half. Yeah. We're just going to mash the quest location. I'm going to sell off the Mega Elixir. Javelin, two-handed sword, bronze bangle, and then back out. One, because I don't like Afrojack. Uh, two, I like a better view on the car. And we can hey, save like a good no bit of time here. Um, yeah. I will tell you this run is tremendously slow for me. So the traffic pattern might be a little messy than what I'm used to. Normally, we're absurdly ahead of the car that's in front of us right now. Um, statistically, you also do have fast, faster runs uh, if you put Final Fantasy 13 on. It also may occasionally summon a Sharky. Um, but yeah, being able to manually drive the car like this, I am saving time because the car only maxes out at, I guess that's... 50 miles an hour um, so when you literally can't go any faster the only way to shorten travel time is to literally shorten the physical distance gonna finish the rest of this menu and I'm going to sell off everything that I have except the sheep milk um, and then I'm going to buy 98 of them now very important if, especially if you're not driving the car and you get to like this point you need to hold the gas and slide a little bit to the right. If you're not going to park at the motel, massive time loss, you get stuck in stuff you don't wanna. So, I usually aim for these bushes here. Ignis, pull Double tap, second. hold, ash. So, ZCB, this is a big one. I'm actually walk. gonna put the timer here. We'll call it 1730 in our recording because that's what it says in OBS. Right. So, a lot of y'all are struggling with this. I did too, legitimately. Um, it took me probably two to three hours of like practicing with D-Wins to start to even kind of understand the concept of it. And I'll be honest, um, the way I do it and the way I learned how to do it, two completely different things. Um, just evolution of the run and kind of learning the timing for the trick. Um, so what I'm going to recommend doing for your first time, okay? Um, normally, those of you that have watched any of the runs, you'll see like me or Yida doing it like all the way up here. Um, this barrier to get out of bounds, and I'll show it once we get up there, is way, way thicker than it is over here. Um, so I'd recommend like grabbing this divot here. Let's see if I can pull up the map. What is the map button? There it is. Okay, I'm, this probably doesn't help at all. Um, but, you know, go from here and then just start getting comfy. You know, what I do is jump and warp strike. And then start adding in your inputs. Okay, so you want to try and, again, try doing this while you're holding forward. Jump, warp strike. And then once you get this, the, the camera menu open, you do have a little bit of time if you need to reconfigure your hands, okay? You don't need to smash this all through. That's about how much time you have. You probably have like, what, seven, eight seconds? So what I'm going to do is once we get to that take photo, the, the photo menu open, what I basically do is I just slide right across. X circle, pause, like in the same kind of same kind of stroke. Actually, you know what? If you look really closely, it, it might just be me. Um, but if you look at the mini map, let me actually let me take a second and pull this out. We'll we'll do like a a little detail here. Okay, this is probably gonna look wild as hell. 
Okay. So I am stretching the shit out of this. Um, can I turn this on? Capture cursor. Perfect. Okay. So. That's actually not going to work. <laughs> um, you know what? I have a better idea. Just give me a second. I'm trying to kind of figuring out the easiest way to do this. Okay. We're going to do this as a center capture instead. Right. So now I can like kind of hover my cursor over stuff, but I can make this as big as I need it to be. Okay. So we're looking at this map here, right? See how there's this weird little like line, like a discoloration? This is actually the seam for out of bounds. You'll notice the area, no, let me just pull this back out. You notice the area that I was standing, it's, it's very, very thin, where it's very thick where I was standing like at the gate, but it just kind of trails into almost nothingness here and then back out. So we're gonna, we're gonna do it there. Um, and just turn this back off. Enable preview, disable preview. Okay. So, like I said, just kind of get comfortable with that. That kind of input. We're going to go options, graphics, 30. Zero. I mean, I'll do it the way I, you know, I learned how to do it. Wait until it hits zero. Here, here might be the, the key part. So I have my left hand, the inner, like not my thumb, but like the thumb of my palm is pushing forward. And it's basically like parallel, like with the, with the controller face. So my fingers on my left hand are over the right side of the controller. It's going to resume and I'm going to mess it up. Yeah, we're working on this tutorial. It's fine. Have have a good time. Ask questions. It's just I figured I'd do this live just so it's more of a kind of in the feel. I'm going to set this back up. Fine. My fingers actually slipped there. Uh, marry a cute woman. Okay. Now I'm just going to keep holding forward. I can guarantee without looking, we already got ZCB. See? Pretty simple. This is like the easiest spot in the game to hit it. And like I mentioned previously, that discoloration we're looking at is right here. I mean, look at this. I can literally just walk off of this area. Whereas the area that Yida and I are, are doing some of these in the, the higher tier runners, D and Chitose and Needle, I mean, that, that is a, a, a very large amount of space to move. Um, but the, the, the important thing that I'm listening for... Um, and to be honest, I think it's, you know, I, I hate being that guy like, oh, just go faster. Um, it, it's not so much how quickly you get into, like, the camera menu. I think it's how quickly you get out. Um, there is an audio cue that I'm listening for, and it's actually the sound of the, the menu closing twice. That lets me know that I've hung the extra menu in there that I need, that the game is basically buffering and trying to figure out where I am. So, uh, this noise. If you hear it twice setting up ZCB, you're in there. So, do it once again, kind of a, kind of a moderate pace. The big thing is getting this take photo, close photo option menu up as quick as possible. Like you wanna be able to see that weirdness, the lack of a background really. I mean, we, we can hang here as long as you want. Thirty, back it out. And again, gotta be quick on this one, which is why I like doing it with uh, confirm as a as opposed to backing out. I messed it up because my hands are tired. 
also doing this slow is like such a brain blast because like I'm I'm used to just kind of powering through it. See that second cancel, and then just keep holding forward. Um, I'd recommend until you get comfortable with CCB, don't don't try and like, don't try and be the hero on this. Don't try and do the whole movement in in one shot. It is a lot. <laughs> There's a lot you have to understand and get comfortable with on the timing. Just give it some time and definitely definitely try doing it from here. You know, and then the easy thing is you just go, just, just warp strike around. And then once you get to the other side of the gate, just warp strike back in bounds. Um, you know, trust me, that's what we used to have to do. And then we started getting really good at it. And we started getting really confident. And then the times kept sliding down. And then once you start figuring out, like, your, you know, your kind of lick for it, try moving it up closer. This one, you just gotta be more demanding with it. Um, uh, for me, that loading wheel that showed up there too, um, occasionally that doesn't show up. Uh, and what I normally do with that is I give it like, basically just what I did, just repeat the open the gallery and close the gallery. Just, just really quick. Cause a lot of times you get a second chance on it. Um, I'm having, I'm having trouble doing this all in one go, but I'm also realizing that I'm trying to like explain my thought process and my internal timing. This should be. This should be out and around. There it is. Then call your car. I'm just kind of hustling it along here before we actually get too late in the day and then I'm kind of screwed. Um, one thing you do want to pay attention to, though, um, it is, for whatever reason, easier to call the car from the left side of the road as opposed to the right side. Um, and there is sometimes the unlucky misfortune of Cindy parking the car the wrong direction. It happens. Uh, it's stupid. Um, we're just going to go parking spot here. Or, sorry, map point. Um, in game time is five. I actually might have a problem where we may have kind of dorked around too much. Um, I'll, I'll just I'll just kind of work around it. I think that I think there's a quest we have that's only available during the day that I can kind of push. Um, either way. Um, so from this point forward, everything is pretty much going to be on a clock. Um, I mentioned traffic is on a clock. Um, a lot of times, from what I've seen, there are pretty consistent encounters on the clock. Um, like normally for me, in game time in the car around like, uh, I think it's like 9.15, 9.30, 9 o'clock. They're pretty consistently there. Sometimes they aren't, and that sucks. Um, you know, don't don't worry about, oh, is this taking too long? Until you're, like, already at the point where, like, you can't afford to lose 15 or 20 additional seconds to secure an encounter. So... What we're going to do is drive to the Chocobo post. Again, um, I would recommend learning how to manually drive this um, because the point that I picked is is not where you actually want to park. Um, and I will caution you because I've done it many a times. Be careful coming around this turn. Don't like just straight hold right. You'll smash into the guardrail because it's not coded correctly. And right past the entrance to the Chocobo Ranch, don't hold right because that telephone pole is sticking out. Ah, Ohio Nielsen. Genki Deska. So, um, what I'm going to do is basically once I pass the entrance, I'm going to pull a little bit away back into like the actual traffic and we're going to fast stop right here. What was that? My apologies. So, that's pretty good. 
Um, you're going to get one roll out of the car. I'm going to get into that one. One warp strike. We're going to go to the weapon vendor, and we're going to buy the air step sword. It's very important. I highly recommend it. Actually, it's required. You, you can't skip it. Okay. So here's where the differential lies between um, Yida's route and myself, one of the big ones. Um, Yida will opt to get enhancement with Ignis first. Um, which allows you to give Noctis the fire element to warp strikes. It works, it's consistent, and it also saves AP so you can get um, tech strike later. So you can get early enhancement on Ifrit and a much better chance at a one cycle. Um, for me, personally, I just like using Ignis. It's faster here. Um, it just works into my strats a little bit better. So I'm going to grab Regroup, Overwhelm, change to Ignis, and then the gear menu. Engine Blade's going to get swapped for Air Step Sword. Fire goes left. The boys all get Exosuit, and I toss Ignis the Mage Masher so he gets extra damage during this Dead Eye fight. That's all you need. It's also important that you don't put Noct in anything that, is, that isn't that is not the Exosuit. Um, coming out of this Deadeye fight, we need to get put into danger mode. I think I, I, think I might take a, take a minute or two here to explain um, the Deadeye setup. What time do we have? 31.4. Okay. So... What we are going to do with Deadeye is we're going to do two ZCBs into his arena. Um, the first one is going to get us basically in between out of bound spaces. And then the second one is going to get us into the arena. Um, once we get into the actual arena, I'm going to kind of um, basically just do the fight as quickly as possible. Um, coming out of the fight, you want to make sure that knocked. Basically, what I do is I jump and just spam up for air step sword so that Noctis has that equipped right out of the bat. The second his feet touch the ground after that jump, now tactics advance two is trash. Quit, quit, quit dumpster driving. Um, so, what we're going to do um, once your feet touch the ground is you're going to warp back to the car. Um, so, it's going to be R3 down X. Um, and I think this is, this is the tough part because you really don't get a chance to practice this sometimes. Um, and if you mess it up, like it's very harrowing. Um, so what I do basically the second I load back in next to the car, what you're going to do is go into first person mode and you're basically going to do a ZCB, but with the car. Okay. And I mentioned the, um, the the cancel menu noise. That is your audio cue. The second you hear that second dunk dunk, stop stop inputting anything because you can overmash out of that setup and it sucks. Um, I'm just trying to think. Um, but yeah, that, that's that's basically what setting up AMG is. Is you are just doing a ZCB, but you're doing it lined up with interacting with the regalia. So as you're inputting um, your, your, your setup for it, what you're actually doing is pausing into the regalia menu and then unpausing. But the game isn't kind of quick enough to register that. Um... I will try and timestamp the actual um, AMG setup when we get there, but let's just get there. Yo, Honor coming in 35 whole months, dude. It's almost three years. Excuse me. All right, so we're going to talk to Wiz. Um, he, do he doesn't have much to say. Um, me, my audio cue is when I hear uh, Warden for you. 
If you could bring the beast down. Once he says yeah, you can hit X. So what'll it be today? All right. I go to the left here to hunt. Go. We're going to grab Behemoth Undertaking, which is the quest that we want. And then we're going to grab Exorcism of the Nebula Wood and mash through it. That's going to set our time directly tonight at the right time that we want it. You know it. All right. Very quickly, going to back out of this and we're going to warp right to the car. We're going to have a discussion with not, uh, Ignis here. Blah, blah, blah. You can't drive because I'm not good at it either. No. The roads are perilous at night. Your input here is going to be we right, which allows town. you to manually take over the car. And I'm already holding well, the gas, the from here. and you're just going to so basically hit X when you load in. You are going to be manually driving. To a minimum. Um, I'm going to try and do my best to call this stuff out as we go. Um, I will say you can get an unfortunate encounter during this setup. Your best bet is to just warp back to rest point, wait like five, ten seconds, warp back to car, and try again. That should shift everything. So we're going to keep us to the inside here, and then once we get past this first fence, start moving to the left. Uh, I'm going to try and hit the fast park right about here. So like four or five chain lengths. Go from here. Roll out, and I want air step sword. We're just gonna basically go straight down. Okay, that is not a good sound that close to me, but I'm gonna set it up. Yeah, okay, so this can occasionally happen. Could I have made it there? Yeah, but hey, we may as well show off like the horrible things that can happen. Easy way to get rid of this, just go back to rest point. Like, it, it sucks that. <laughs> Like for me, this has been a run of nothing going properly, but I again, I'd rather be able to showcase like, hey, this is how you recover from this stuff as opposed to y'all trying to figure this out yourself. <laughs> Cause like, you know, the, the runs that I PB aren't the runs where this happens, but that doesn't mean it doesn't happen to you. Okay, this sounds a little bit more agreeable. There we go. One other thing you can do is if you hear them like that, you can kind of lag a little bit. And now we have the first ZCB. Um, there are a few things I want to touch on here. Um, with ZCB, like I've been mentioning, um, you, you want to hold forward because you do have control over your character. And I think that might be the issue that some of you are having with ZCB. Um, is you're just doing the inputs but not holding a direction. So what ends up happening is you're doing it properly. You're just not actually moving the way you need to. Um, with this one, you cannot go straight through. If you do, you will end up in a, a, a pit that you can't get out of, and it sucks, and your run's over. So what I would recommend doing is actually, kind, instead of going like straight, kind of a little bit up and to the right um for some reason for me this is also one of these ones where if i don't get the loading wheel on like the first attempt for some reason if you mash the absolute ever loving piss out of cancel sometimes it'll just force you through i don't know why this is like the only place where it happens it just does and it's consistent so i abuse that for what it is but let's get our first ccb in we'll see what we get for the offer but once we're back in the crown city okay so this is going to be normal all right getting that pop-up is not a big deal uh normally if i don't have to like warp um you'll get that one at the car so don't worry about it we're just going to basically follow our quest marker here. Uh, just be very careful of your drops. You don't want to fall down some of these steep sides. Now, uh, we are getting ready to enter Deadeye. Now, very important. Because the game, realistically, we're out of bounds, has no idea where we are, and we have not hit any of the triggers to let the game know that we're in Deadeye's arena... If you ZCB in here and don't hit the trigger back here, um, the game's just going to soft lock. So uh, there is like the faster way is to just land down here. 
day's work. You'll have Gladio say all in a day's work. And then I generally like to take like one jump to center myself. And then because I already hit the trigger, I'm just gonna start moving to the right and forward. Right there, perfect. Okay, so say you're a big old bonehead, like me, I'm an idiot. And your dumbass forgot to hit the get get that dialogue trigger up there. It's fine. You can get it if you just go back up into this way. Glad he glad he will say the same thing. It's fine. Okay. So now that we're in the fight, back to 120, um, and then I'm gonna siphon off 33 fire. That is the all that I need, and we're gonna open with fire. Um, again, because this has taken me a little bit longer than usual, our spawns might be a little inconsistent for AMG, but we'll just, you know, play it by ear. From there, the, my time to stop and explain things is going to be a lot less uh, because everything is running on a timer that I can't pause. Okay, normally I enter this fight, what I'm going to do is take a few steps forward, hold circle, continue holding, let it go. And then we're going to immediately change to Ignis. And for me personally, I'm just going to mash through these. I like to try and target the back claw, although it looks like we're getting a nice damage buff early. Um, and now it's gone because we didn't keep chain up. Um, but my goal is to normally try and get like between his rear legs. Um, just because when he does that spin move, he drags you with him. This is a horrible dead eye, but like this entire run has been dog shit. Okay. The other thing you notice there, like I was going for the front claws and I just, it's not connected. This is literally the worst dead eye I've had in a while. Like I'm at, about to scream levels of frustration with this. The other thing you will notice is in this arena, the, the camera, like, the camera in this game sucks, but the camera for this fight specifically is fucking dog shit, to be frank. Return to car. Um, just because it has no idea where you are. Roll into the car, first person view, and we're gonna set up our AMG. All right, hit 30, and then what I do is I swap confirmation. So now X is cancel and circle is confirmed. I didn't get the loading sign. There I did, there's my second beep. Once you hear that second blip, hit confirm, and that will make sure you are in the, the menu for the regalia. That red symbol there knows we're in combat. The second you see that, main menu, element C. And just do nothing until you see the screen shake and you get that second pop up. You can now hit circle or confirm, whatever you have for confirm. Um, and then swap from first person view to third person view. And me, because what I did was I flipped um, confirm and cancel, I can now do jumping warp strikes, which uh, <laughs> saves like 30 seconds from movement back to camp. We're just gonna work our way right back over to, to Wiz. Um, for right now, this is AMG. You, if you get to this point, you have AMG. The, the only thing you need to do is just reset the, the overlay so you don't soft lock. So we're going to run and just get back to, to turn this quest in. Once we get here, you can close all these menus down. I wish I had a little bit more time to set up that explanation, but like I said, sometimes it's immediately, sometimes it's five seconds sometimes it's less uh i'm gonna call that 42 45 for amg and then coming out of this we're gonna return to rest point and we're gonna rest and what that does is that sets our anchor point um so this that's gonna be like our like kind of auto save um, the other thing is, is it loads us in at a point where we can uh, basically just hop on a chocobo, open a menu, and the game basically doesn't load the area that's going to let us get out of bounds. Um, is there anything else that I could help clarify on AMG? Um, I will warn you, sometimes you just get a really bad spawn 
Uh, sometimes you can get like imps and your party will end up killing them before they kill you. <laughs> Just reload, try again. Uh, we're going to return to title once we get out of that. And then we'll work on getting rid of this overlay. Um, one thing to be warned of, sometimes your controller will vibrate. Um, but you won't get that pop-up. Wait for the pop-up. Um, because it does summon the Arachne occasionally. And occasionally they come with the Iron Giants. Um, and they can cast Stop on you which locks you in place and lets you not do anything. But in the heat of the moment, it might feel like you've been KO'd, but you're not. Let's wait till you get that pop-up. So we've made it back to the main menu. What we're gonna do is go to the DLC, downloadable content. For some reason, some people loading episode Gladio clears it. it, it for some people, Comrades does it. Uh, me, Arden does. Um, one of these DLCs will do it. I just go to Arden because I don't have to fight it, and I swear the RDK is faster. But then again, I am a lunatic, and I don't think that's ever, you know, kind of really been questioned. But I, I will tell you that, you know, world record's likely not determined by <laughs> which DLC you load into. Now, um, I will say again, very quickly, when I was doing the ZCB, to set up AMG, I changed my confirmation buttons. So I'm now running in, in Japanese layout and have been um, since setting up that ZCB and into AMG. So if you're like confused as to why you see me hitting X, but it's canceling, that's why. But again, that you, that's honestly something you don't have to do. Um, I mean, do I even really recommend doing it until you're super comfortable with this whole process? Probably not. Just take the take the time loss and get the consistency with runs and getting the, the menuing for ZCB and AMG set up before you start trying to blast away. Listen, you'll be faster than me any day, just one step at a time. Okay, now we have the overlay cleared. I'm literally just gonna go in and reload this. Oh God, that RTA is so long. That RTA is almost 20 minutes, 20 minutes slower than world record pace. That's wild. Okay, timer on this one is 47.30. Uh, and this will be uh, insomnia stuff. Okay, now normally when I load into this, I'm already jumping. We're gonna go visit Taka here, um, and we're gonna get ourselves a food buff. Um, it, this is just the best access we have to anything. It gives us a little bit of health, HP regen, and that little extra attack. Bon appetit. So, when I'm leaving here, because I have AMG, I can open the main menu. And what I'm gonna do is turn the graphics back up because I hate 30 FPS. And I'm going to revert back to X confirm circle cancel. Now, the chocobo always spawns away from the camera. And we're just going to run it for one day. What we're going to do is mount it and then open the menu. Going to go to items. And then swap to first person view. Check. And then back to third person view. I just personally enjoy third, third person better. You can do it in first person if you want. Now. In order to boost with the chocobo, I'm gonna hit square and triangle at the same time. And then right before the the dash ends, tap the uh, tap the brake or slide button, and then get back on R2. Um, this is gonna allow you to sprint more and gives you a boost in your stamina recovery. Important things to note: do not get attacked while on your chocobo. You will get thrown off of it. You have to close the menu to get back on your chocobo, which means the the earliest um, zone out that we have here loads in. You would have to go all the way back to Hammerhead to, to deload it. Um, if you just don't give a shit and you wanna keep the run going, 
um, what you're <laughs> what you're gonna do is get back on the chocobo and go all the way to where chapter one in the glitchless route ends and you're gonna just run off the cliff there <laughs> and then you'll eventually meet up with us um, after a bit longer of a swim we're gonna look at this hump here and then we're not gonna despawn the chocobo like in GDQ. And I'm gonna do that by staying to the inside. And once I'm across this, just very gently, three cancels gets you out. So now we are officially out of bounds and I am just going to basically truck my way through. Um, if you've not really used the chocobos before, get comfortable with that power slide uh, recharge, and I'll do it without it. So there's just hitting sprint. Now, like, eh, your stamina comes back. But if you combine a sprint right at the end with a little slide, get a nice little speed boost, and the stamina bar starts ticking back. Um, another thing to think about is jumps. Uh, sometimes you can... It's, it's kind of tough to time, but it's very easy on steeper slopes where you can time your jump and instead of like having like a, a nice soft float down, uh, you basically just get launched at like full tilt sprint speed uh, for whatever reason. I haven't figured out the super consistencies of that yet, but it's great when it happens. Um, again, I would recommend once you can like get here and get AMG working, just do a, do a bit of honestly a bit of exploring. Uh, this is a big intimidating map for people to kind of memorize, and it's just like the only reason I'm super comfortable with everything in this area is because I've been doing it for hundreds of hours. Um, you know, kind of look at the map, learn where you are. Um, I'll open this really quickly. Our goal is to end up somewhere around here. I just have to be careful. I can't waste too much time because I do have a food buff running. And again, we're on a clock. Um, but yeah, try some of these little little jumps here. So any questions about the run so far? Anything that I would need to go back and clarify on? The funny part is, is like, I think the old tutorial was like an hour and 40 minutes and we're already at an hour and I still... <laughs> Still have half the run to go, which is a, you know, just me doing it is another 30 minutes. That's fucking wild. Either way, at least I've been fairly diligent uh, about setting up kind of where I'm gonna timestamp this, which is, which is nice. Um, I don't know if this will be ready tomorrow, probably two days from now. I can get it up and then link it back into the Discord and SRC. Um, but it'll definitely go into the Final Fantasy 15 playlist on my personal YouTube. We'll give you the usual shills in a bit. Um, and hopefully if you're learning this, like this will also give you like kind of the inclination of when you can kind of like take a bit of a brain break if you need to mid run. I know it's just like, it's going to sound weird coming from an RPG speedrunner who's done like you know, runs runs a plenty, but this is a short run to me. An hour is not very long. I mean, my average my average runs for a long time were in like the four hour mark for you know my my daily speed run. Um, so this is this is definitely a much shorter category, but in my opinion, it's very high stress. Um, just because a lot of it is more about you understanding your computer or your, your console if you're running it on console um and the other thing is like it's one of those things where once this glitch is active if you make a mistake you're kind of bummed um in terms of like oh i made a mistake well good luck um there, there are a few things that can happen that I'm not even going, going to attempt to replicate, so I think I'll just kind of mention them at, like, the end of the run, just cause I'm just not going to have the, the time to hammer it out. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to try our best. Uh, if you look basically directly in line with my chocobo, there is that kind of line that goes from bottom right to top left, um, basically center of the screen. 
So what I'm going to do here is open the menu, go to save, and then right over this one, double tap. So we're going to basically hop on the Chocobo. And then what I like to do is go to first person mode. And we're just going to swim the Chocobo right over. And I'm basically aiming the S in save, like just to the right of that 45 degree line. And I'm just going to keep keep going that way. Uh, and we're basically just going to keep going until those rocks in the background go away. Now, there will be like one transition as we get closer where that line kind of deloads itself. Just keep going the direction you're going. Um, I will give my personal plug here. It, yeah, a lunatic. <laughs> if you have questions or you know just want to hang with us, there's the Discord. Uh, my personal one, if you for some reason can't find the Final Fantasy 15 Discord, I can give you that link. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube and you haven't subscribed, why are you watching an hour and a half video of a game that no one on the internet likes and not subscribed yet? Like, bro, I'm trying to feed my family of my cats and my ferret and my wife and my $6,000 a month candle bill. Tea drinkers, uh, check out our blends we put together with our friends over at Adagio Proceeds, benefiting the Trevor Project. My wife is a very talented uh, woman. She makes one-of-a-kind, handmade, ethically sourced bone jewelry. She also crochets really cute, scrunkly voodoo dolls. Uh, check out her Etsy. Last but not least, you want to support the stream that little bit extra. Um, that was the second transition, by the way, right there. Feel free to check out the throne wish list. Yeah. Okay, so you'll notice that the line is gone. If you are nervous about where you want to go, just aim just to the right of that little uh, little dark mark right there. You're going to get a pop-up there or somewhere around here that lets you know you're, you leveled up on your chocobo again. That's fine. Just keep going. I will tell you we are getting pretty close to where this is going to disappear. Um, I'm also going to tell you that I'm drifting a little bit too far left for my own comfort. Um, the absolute limit is actually on the other side of that little lump, but I don't like cutting it close. If you go too far left, you'll load into a void and soft lock. So it should be like five, 10 seconds here. Perfect. All right. Save. And then what I do is I close that. Now the menus are a little wacky here. So you'll see me kind of go up down once or twice. Um, because if you cancel out and just immediately go to load, the game's in such a weird state that it doesn't register that you're trying to load and it you're just going to overwrite your save, which isn't going to hurt anything, but it's not what you want to do. So definitely save once it disappears, cancel, hit down twice, and then back up to load, and that should load in. If you get that pop-up, Congrats, you've done the Insomnia Wrong Warp, and we're at about 57.30. Okay, so this is where the heat starts to come hot and heavy. Um, and I'm going to try my absolute best to keep up with this, but I no longer have the ability to pause the game. Uh, my food buff is on a timer, and everything else is on a timer, so we basically have to go. Uh, I'm going to warp strike here until we get to this point warp. And now our next goal is to basically get to the end of the game. And I want to get 99 ice. Um, because AMG is active, I was able to open the menu. And I basically just gave myself... Uh, I, I set up my menu so that I can fast menu the elixir. Um, so it's right there. And that's going to be important for movement. Gonna hit this third point warp, and then our last ice is back here. You should be able to get three warp strikes in, and then two more. You get you right there, and then this sh you should be topped up no matter what. Um, I'm gonna roll off of this one. This is a another little skill you'll learn as you do the run. Once we get up here, the game's camera is gonna go wonky. 
You still have control of Noctis, but like holding straight is not actually going to make you go straight. Um, so just kind of do your thing. Uh, I will give you the obligatory bright light warning here, and I'm going to swap to Ragnarok. You have to do this menu with the D-pad, okay? Uh, because you can move while this menu is open. Uh, so we're going to go combat, warp factor, warp factor two. Techniques, I'm going to go over here to enhancement, and I'm going to go right to stats, and then accessory slot. Absolutely, MPT. How goes? Gear, Magitech, Amethyst, Tech Turbocharger, and then Ignis is going to get swapped over to Enhancement. We're going to go into this fight, and our main goal is to just Warp Strike everything, okay? Now, because we are only level 9, and we don't have Point Blank Warp Strike, just know that Warp Striking stuff right in front of you, you're not going to get the kill. So try and give yourself a little bit of distance, um, and take your time with it. And um, if you notice, during uh, during that weird funky camera bit, I warp striked myself until I um, was in stasis and then just um, smashed that elixir just so I could kind of keep warp striking. Hopefully Triel's feeling a little bit better. Okay, looks like we have both floating death. I like them in this position except that backup maneuver because if you do this right, you can kind of pinball between both of them and put them both in vulnerable while maximizing your damage, just like that. And then if I can, I try and get over here to grab this. Um, it's a couple extra hundred gil, which is nice, but it's also a good timer for me. Um, and then you want to set, basically have your menu set to take a photo. Because we're going to do it with a glitch here. I'm going to grab iron shavings. Then I'm going to line myself up with this gate. Okay. We're going to go ascension. And then d-pad to power craft. And then down to elementcy. Um, we're going to do 33 fire. And 99 ice. And then there's 99 sheep milk. Um... And I've been very gently kind of pushing forward on the D-pad or uh, the analog stick while we're there. So I'm able to move while the menu is open and we perfectly time it with core. Okay. We're going to do um, what's called the camera reset, um, which is going to cancel our like dialogue cooldown here. And like it's basically an animation skip. Just, it's literally the same thing as ZCB minus the menuing. You just open the camera really quick and close it. I'm gonna roll out of this dialogue. And we're gonna jump our way up to Yosef. I'm gonna swap over to the air step sword because we're gonna be doing movement after this. Names Yosef, our objective, several of the, the marshal. Roger. Well, oh, that sounds like most management. Okay. For me, this is what I prefer just because it works. I'm gonna go sell. We're gonna sell the Armon eyeballs, the iron shaving, two behemoth tenderloin, and we're gonna buy the Hyperion. If you have the extra thousand gil, please buy an extra Phoenix down. Uh, you can probably do this with like 15 or 16 ethers. I'm gonna set this for ether, and we are just gonna work our way up to um, Cerberus. Um, if you can, during your practice, and I would definitely recommend having a practice save from this area that you can, you know, just set up AMG, make a save right before the car, um, and get yourself as many Phoenix Downs as you can to practice the, the Arden Escape. That's definitely one of the trickier things, and the only reason it looks so easy is because I've done it and lost it and failed it hundreds of fucking times. Um, I also have a fairly consistent setup, so Arden's uh, attack patterns and choices are fairly consistent for me, or at least borderline reliable enough. Okay, so right before we get to that last um, lampshade there, I'm going to take an ether because I want to go in with full, dual cast Blazaga, and set Ragnarok. Phase one should be pretty consistent. Warp strike, okay, you're going to sit and spin, you suck. Three. 
Take my fourth warp strike. Lazaga, target the foot, warp strike. Ether, and at the same time, you're gonna hit Ignis's enhancement. Um, and I'm gonna try and target this front paw here with Cerberus, and that should, hopefully, if we're lucky, give us a stagger. Um, that's that's a little late, so I might have to re-enhancement, which is mildly fucking annoying, but like, this run hasn't been cooperating. Again, I'd rather have like a really kind of rough tutorial where things don't go perfect, so you can see how to dig out. Okay, phase one is finished. I'm going to re like full up my MP. And then I'm gonna try and target not that front head. It always misses the front head. We get our warp strikes in three, and I'm gonna go for this front leg here and hopefully get a topple. It's not looking great. I, oh, okay, unfortunate. Um, again, warp strikes, a little bit inconsistent. So the one thing I'm gonna have to pay attention to here is I'm pretty sure I'm gonna run out of enhancement, which is going to suck. Uh, and we're going to have to recast it. I'm still gonna try and get the topple, which I got there for some reason. It's stupid, but whatever. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna go with getting the enhancement again, unfortunately. I'd rather hold on to my extra um, Blazara or Blazaga cast more than anything else. So basically, just beat him down, and then he'll pop up into the air. Um, and then this is kind of the setup for, for Ifrit. Um, 106, it looks like. Okay, we'll skip this cutscene. And I want to make sure I have, like, a halfway decent amount of MP. This should be kind of close enough. Okay, the first phase of, of Ifrit is pretty easy. You're just gonna warp strike, with, uh, warp strike with Ragnarok, attack three times, swap to air step sword, warp strike back, and then basically repeat. Um, the second phase of Ifrit is where the challenge lies. Stay cool. Um, there is like a setup that works for me about 90% of the time. We're gonna go for that. If it doesn't work, just don't hang your head. Just just keep trying. Basically, what we're going to be looking for is for him to kind of vanish and teleport doing, like, not, like, throw his sword up and come down, but he's going to just kind of be floating and doing, like, a spinny slash very slowly. You want to hit him with magic then and warp strike the piss out. So, this is phase one. Warp strike, three attacks. Swap to air step, back, repeat. Just keeping an eye on my MP here. I wanna make sure I have at least 15 there so I know when I have to drain this ether. And we don't need to get his HP all the way down. It should be like one more warp strike. And then you'll notice the music start to change. You can start holding summon here. Coming into this opening, I'm going to warp strike immediately and just mash attack. Okay. Good enough. I want to put myself right about in the center of the circle and set for Blizzard. Wait till he disappears and goes for the grab attack. So we should be... Our opening so far is pretty okay. I'm going to hold forward with this cast and then we're just going to start warp striking. And we're not gonna get first round Vuln, that's okay. Just gonna keep keep trucking away here. And I want his HP to be around like a half. Okay, this timing doesn't look super great. I'm gonna poke him a little bit. Then we're gonna go back to Blizzaga. I'm gonna wait to see what he does here. Okay, so this is what I want. I'm just a little bit ahead. Okay. All right, how do I want to handle this? Okay, that's not ideal, but we'll we'll go from here. Uh, unfortunately, my damage didn't sync up with his timing, um, but that was the attack that I wanted. It's just I didn't have the magic cast available. Um, and unfortunately, that means his barrier is up. So I'm gonna try and get some sort of backup strat going. The other thing is my enhancement wore off. 
Okay, so the next best thing I can look for right here is like a parry, parry encounter. Um, or I can just do this third cast here. Let's just go third cast. And again, you're not trying to drain his HP completely, but it needs to be a bit lower than this. Probably gonna get screwed here. Looks like I'm getting screwed here. Again, everything that's gone wrong in this run can and has. Um, so at this point, I'm gonna try and pick him out of the air or get a really good parry. But we're pretty darn close. I just want to make sure I have that one last cast. Okay, we have two ethers. There we go. We'll just take the parry. Okay. So that was that was pretty trash. Again, what you want to see, like our opening was good, and the second round of attack was was also really good. It's just I was uh, he was faster than my magic could recoup. Um, but what you would want to do is if that timed out properly, you would just cast that magic and start warp striking, and you'd be fine. Swap to air step sword here and start rolling. Once you get to the doors, options, graphics, 30 FPS. This is non-negotiable. One that I intend to keep. Open the door. Once your hands start opening the door, menu, tutorial, and hover over yes. And start running in. Once you see that encounter stripe, hit yes. Congratulations, you've now skipped the Kings of Yore. We're going to mark this at 147.30. Kings of Yore skip. Okay. Get into the nitty gritty here. There's pretty much not much left in this. I'll probably try and throw down like an run after. And I don't know. We got SMT on deck tonight. Basically, you have to do nothing here until Carbuncle asks you what you want to do. And you're going to tell him what you want, what you really, really want. And that's to exit because we don't have time for tutorials. This is just better than fighting the Kings of Yore at level nine with a crap, like, fucking loadout. Welcome home, Willow. I'm also alive. And live. Funny streamer joke. <laughs> How's your face feeling, Mama? Yo, what up, Fansar? Not even speedrunning, tutorialing today. Damn, girl. Sounds like you need some fresh protein shakes, huh? Two warp strikes. Push. Oh, I'm glad your cat's back. Hell yeah. All right. This is your last chance to tidy up some things in the menu that you need to do. Options. We're going to go back to 120 or whatever your default is. If you forget to unequip Ignis of the Mage Mashers... It happens. You can do it. Just, just, just be really good. <laughs> Soft pasta? What kind? Yeah, that sounds like a horrible idea. Warp strike, air step sword. And then what we are going to do is try and get into this door here. I'm going to open the menu. Elemency. First person view twice. Get close to the door. Hmm, not just like farther. the save trick with the well, chocobo. Just just nope. double mash. Okay? Yeah, From that... here to the second. end of the run, we are Don't on die. very, very tight timing. Okay? Uh, yeah, no, yeah. I feel you. Even being on I a plane sounds awful after having, like, sinus Take construction me. or deconstruction oh. just because, like, yeah. you're, you know... It, Airplane it. cabins are normally um, twice normal atmosphere. You can take whichever you like. Ooh, tor I love tortellini. Okay, we're gonna mash that photo selection. That's the one. We're gonna hit square, attire, and we're gonna hover over Royal Raymond. We're looking for an audio or visual cue. It is, it is a fairly big window on the first one to equip the Royal Raymond. 
Um, and that's going to be when Arden puts his foot on the, the, the throne and it zooms into Nock's face. You're also looking for Onocked, how I have yeah. waited for this. When that line comes up, you're going to equip the royal raiment. Okay. And then you're going to go right back into this menu and set it up basically the same way again. Um, but when the screen fades to black, you're going to equip the royal raiment again, which unequips it. What up, Enroll? Yeah, say I'm hi to YouTube, everybody. This will this will be going up once I timestamp it and edit it out a little bit in the next couple of days. The throne brings you here. Oh, it's totally fine. I don't know why people get all clammed up it's when I'm doing stuff like this. Like, have fun. Treat it like a normal normal stream, because it is. It just so happens that it's educational today for once, and like stuff people want to learn. Oh no! Okay, ready? Here we go. How I have waited for this. And then set it back up again. Than you could ever know. Tonight, like instead of learning about the horrible the things that I've seen and now I'm trauma dumping on you, you get to learn something informational. Come to an end. Do you uh, have any ideas when you'll be returning Despite to normal streams, Willow? Going. Huh. Talk about a grudge. Arden sits the throne. <sighs> Not for long. Okay. This is my attention. Two. This pen worked until I gave it to my wife. What did you do? They okay, no get ready. In this. The battle of kings. Come, Come Noctis. Noctis. And now. If that one's a much tighter window, but once the screen goes all black, just hit get it. Okay. Going into this, the way I have this set up. It ends now. With my strats is going to be pretty consistent. Okay. We're gonna open with Blazaga. We're gonna get about one or two Ragnarok warp strikes in. We're gonna get KO'd. I'm gonna swap and put the uh Mage Mashers on the left and set up that I can quick menu Phoenix down. And then we're gonna start. I'm gonna try my best to make this make sense. Blazaga, Ragnarok. One, two, looks good. I'm gonna kind of position myself there. That's my setup spot. And then an air step sword. Point warp, adjust, point warp. Arden's gonna chase, so what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna really seat myself in here all the way. Wait for that so I can avoid him by pushing way to the right. And I'm going to keep going until I see that point warp go up. Um, normally, if you don't have to avoid Arden, you should have like 50-ish MP left. If you have to, about 40. So that's pretty smooth, pretty clean. I, I promise you that is one of the tricks in this run that is way more difficult than it looks. I'm going to point warp up here. I roll into this. Very important gear, Noctis attire, casual outfit. Do not do anything else until you get into this dialogue with Core. But it's very important that we swap our outfits. So now Noctis has a beard. Now we've time skipped. You can just kind of mash through this dialogue and jump in. Um, if you had a quick Ifrit, you should still have an extra cast. Uh, I'm going to put on our uh, exosuit so I can just kind of keep fighting. And then the Hyperion. We're just going to go to town on Arden. He's going to warp strike around and be an absolute nuisance. Just do your best with him. If you get a summon, perfect. That, that's like the easiest thing that you can have happen. Go with it. And what you're going to do is just do the same setup that, you know, I, I'm doing here, basically. But just know that you, you don't have to wait for a damage down. The summon automatically advances phase, and it gives you way more time to set up. Now, for me, you can kind of hope that you get some voice lines from Arden, but I wouldn't hang your hat on it because this game is so broken. It's not going to be consistent. So I think relying on anything. Okay. So that lets me know I'm about halfway to where I want to be. Um, as long as your damage output isn't like super spiky, um, there is an attack that Arden will start doing. 
Okay. So that's from. Okay. So this is the voice line you want to hear, and then this attack, you know you're getting close. Until you're getting to like world record times, I would say set up the ZCB from here. Or not ZCB, but cutscene skip. So what I did was a long distance warp strike, open the menu, element C, and got into first person view. All right. So I'm just going to let Core take care of this. We're going to play it nice and conservative. Um, so just, just have patience here. It's, it's, it's so painful to get a good run to this point, and then you overcook it, or Core decides to crit all of a sudden, you don't see it, and you don't have the menu open. So I'd rather just take the time here to let you have it so we can go through it. I also realize all of my timestamps are off and I'm an idiot. Yeah, I know this is incredibly long, but I'd rather be conservative. There we go. That'll probably do it. And then we'll take a look back on this so I can double check the time. Oh, he's really fighting. There we go. Okay. Once you get here, hit X to close. Square. Attire is going to change the casual outfit and select your top weapon slot and leave it hanging. What I'm going to start doing is holding back on the joystick, left one. Against and then once the um, summon is optimal, Come. what's up, Gina? Um, once you can start moving oh, with Noctis, King hold R1 Noctis. and then double tap triangle and then hold it. Because the first time you hit it, it's going to sort inventory. And then when you hold it, it's going to skip past this menu and hold the warp strike button. Now, Arden can damage you out of this and it's terrifying. What you need to do is very calmly yet carefully back almost all the way out and then Noctis will pop back up and then set it back up. I do not want to sort my inventory here. I'm going to hover over Hyperion and I'm not going to do anything until that red encounter bar clicks. Okay. The kings of yore are on hand. Now, the reason why we leave this open, and I'll take a second here, is your inventory gets deleted, except for what's in the top slot. Now, because in the normal game, you always get the Sword of the Father, we did not get Sword of the Father, so it can't pull something we don't have. So wait until that encounter flashes, select your final weapon, go to town. Time is input on the input after the shield, so right here. That's it, there's your run. Um, congrats, this is a much, much more difficult category than glitchless. While it is faster, there is a lot more that can go wrong. Um, and I'm sure you're gonna see stuff that doesn't make sense a lot of times, or you'll lose a run and you won't know why, or you'll go and have a, have a run that's super fast and then You'll get like an Arden like no, I did, where so you thought you damaged majesty. it down, but what he just decided that he wasn't gonna the go into the cutscene. Or there you're going, uh, you have a great more. run, Dead Eyes incredibly quick, and this then time. you get no spawns for it. It happens. It really happens. Close your eyes. Um, but yeah, more. if you have any questions, feel free to track me down. Uh, ask a in question the in the 15 are. Discord. Yo, what's up, Crystal? Welcome to the tail end of the tutorial. Um, but yeah. Now, if you want to go back and practice stuff um, that's in AMG, you totally can right now, because the game's still in AMG. Um, but if you're doing something before AMG, um, unfortunately, you have to like full close the game. It's one of those glitches that the game is just so mangled. You basically have to restore it. 
It's all good. Walkman Crystal, how was your stream? Hopefully it went well. So this is farewell. Yeah. Here we are. Mm -hmm. So are you. No turning back now. All right. I will give y'all my information Bumped and then up. I will close the recording. Gladio. Um Bigness. But yeah, we'll we'll pull this back up and then I will get a little we'll bit more accurate timestamps because I realize I wasn't accurate, Locked unfortunately. On. But yeah. My friends. Any questions, hit us up at the Discord. If you fail to beard, you soft lock. Like if you don't swap outfits before um, initiating the core side quest, the game soft locks. Um, like you'll continue and then you'll get to the third phase in Arden. Majesty. And you just won't be able to finish the game. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what happens or you won't be able to open the menu um, to even, even do phase three. I mean, we've seen it happen to me a few times, too, where you just have a really good run, and sometimes Arden is still fighting, but the game's so mangled that he's actually already in his cutscene, and it won't let me open the menu. It happens. But either way, I'll cap the recording here. And thanks.